Hi everyone, this is Bruno Aziza, and today I'm excited to introduce you to a catalog of reference patterns. These are code guidance that are going to help you take advantage of multiple products. So BigQuery, Dataflow, PubSub, Looker, or AI platform in the context of your business needs. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you're trying to build a product recommendation system, or you're trying to predict your prospects propensity to buy, well, you have the opportunity to use these solutions, if you will, to accelerate your deployment. We've learned this from some of the best customers we worked with, and today we're making those references available to you. Now, to tell you how they work and how you can take advantage of this, I've invited Robert Saxby on my team, who's joining us from Amsterdam, to talk to you about them. So first, Robert, thank you for taking the time so late in your day. Let's start at the top. What are these patterns? These reference patterns, um, they, they cover the kind of spectrum of um, use cases that we've, we've, we've seen at different customers. So to give some examples, anomaly detection. Let's say that you have, you're a telco and you're you know, monitoring the, the system logs coming from your calls and you want to make sure that all the traffic on your network is you know, doing you know, proper things. You might want to spot like a bad actor, someone that's going to DDoS one of your services, for example. So seeing those anomalies, that has real value. And with the technologies um, that we make available in the cloud today, we've seen how customers put these things together. And then rather than have, you know, every customer go out there and start, uh, you know, from the beginning, we want to give them a kind of, you know, a leap, a leap start, let's say, uh, and, and give them like 70%, get them 70% of the way there. So think... Um, for, as you mentioned, we, we bring the, the code, sample data, um, instructions on both why the pattern is useful and how to use the pattern, how to run the sample, and then how to customize it, and really importantly, how to activate it. One of the things I, I've seen that I think is really important is when you're in the analytics space is you're getting all these good insights. Once you've got those insights, the next part is how to operationalize it, how to take the, 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 the results of that work and actually activate it and make it work for you. And you know, put the automation in there so you can start using you know, the other folks in your company to work on the next things. That is great. So in fact, today we have a video from Pong that's going to talk about product recommendation. You know, if I'm a customer out there, it's actually it's a Halloween video, so it's also fun to, uh, to watch. If I'm a customer out there, what can I expect from that resource in particular? Yeah, so let's take a step back and think about what a recommendation is. So, um, you know, during this um, this this prolonged period of uh, partial lockdowns and things, I found myself doing, you know, more DIY and then I go online and I buy the, you know, the next tool or the thing I need. And often when you buy a product or a service, there are some recommendations there. Like, for example, if you buy a drill, then they, they might suggest you some drill bits that, you know, will help you drill through wood or metal or something like that. But there's a whole bunch of stuff they could suggest, you know, you could suggest an extra battery or something. Now, obviously, you know, some folks compile these lists manually using their, you know, their specialist knowledge that they have about their area. But now imagine that you don't have a, a catalog of, you know, tens of products or hundreds. You have thousands or tens of thousands. And <clears throat> rather than trying to compile, you know, recommendation lists for all these products, you know, all these tens of thousands of products, why not you let your customer um, website behavior, for example, actually drive that? So with, rec with a recommendation system, we're looking at the feedback that we get from customers, whether it's either explicit or implicit. Implicit is the one we're going after here because what we're trying to do is infer what customers like by you know, how often they go back to a page or how long they look at an article, these kind of things. And then when we take that, we have, we can, we're able to kind of correlate the, what the item that someone's looking at with other items that they look at next. And this we put into a system, and basically what we draw out of that is a list of um, products or services that, that our customers that actively, based on their current behavior, are interested in buying when they look at this product or service. And then when we get a customer and they look at a product, we can then recommend them, you know, one of these um, alternative or complementary um, products. So it's it's real value there. You know, it, it helps you to upsell, cross-sell. It helps you to build a better customer experience. And <clears throat> there are many ways of actually going about building this. Um, the way that we've looked at here is really taking, like, you know, the, the, a canonical approach based on, you know, the systems that we make available in Google Cloud. So BigQuery for your data warehouse, 
we're using uh, Google Analytics data, which is a way to instrument your website in order to see, you know, what folks are doing and how long they spend on page, which page they go to next, all that kind of stuff, like the click-through rates, convergence, the things that are important to you to analyze from your website. We have a service that brings that data into BigQuery. And then in BigQuery as well, we actually have uh, an ML uh, capability. So we're able to generate, based on that analytics data, uh, <clears throat> recommendations using a, a model, ma matrix factorization in this case, and generate that list of recommendations per product. And now here's the, the great thing. It's not just, you know, as I said, it's not just about creating that list or getting those insights. The next step is how to activate that. So when you look at Polong's video as well, well, you'll see the whole journey here, how to get the data, how to, you know, do the, the preparation of the data, how to um, uh, train the model, and then how to do the predictions, and then how to activate that. And <clears throat> so, you know, you might be asking yourself, like, Okay, that sounds like a lot of work. How long is it going to take? Well, as I said, the sample data, all the code is there. I would set, you know, someone a challenge and say, you know, spend a couple of hours running through the sample. And then based on our sample data in this, you'll be generating those recommendations. And then, you know, follow the steps on how to customize and, 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 you know, add in your own data. And then before you know it, you'll be looking at your own data, you know, and, and, and your own analytic data and start generate, generating recommendations for your own company. That is great. So all of these come with a uh, simplified two pager that is going to allow you to really, uh, you know, structure your deployment, simplify your approach and then scale this inside your organization. We're putting the link down here of all the other ones that are available to you. We hope that you're going to enjoy them. Uh, we hope that they're going to help you accelerate uh, value inside your organization. And of course, is there any that you would like us to build for us or you'd like to find out more about how other customers are building, let us know simply by putting a comment down here. Robert, thank you so much for staying up late uh, to talk to us about this. I'm sure lots of people are going to reach out to you. We'll talk to you soon. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, Bruno. Bye-bye.